Well, thank you. So, um, I work for a co-op, which is a uh, little startup in Montreal. Um, I'm sorry, I can't tell you what we're doing right now, because uh, Austin would kill me if I did. I work for him. Uh, Austin, do you want to bring your laptop up? Anyway, uh, I'm going to stall for time, so I'll tell you what Austin does. Austin is actually um, really heavily involved in the startup community, not only in Montreal, but also in Toronto. Um, he is working with Montreal Startup, which is a new angel, um, angel community inside Montreal. He's also involved in the Islamic Quebec, and uh, I believe um, he also has his own uh, investment company called Cloud Ventures. He's also helped us at Barcamp Montreal and Demo Bootcamp Montreal um, by bringing in lots of sponsors. Um, and at Akoa, we also do some community events like Montreal Python, just bringing together people who are interested in technology and getting them to network and bringing them up with people who can give them good advice on how to run companies. So, Austin is going to give you some advice as well. <laughs> Why must you disappoint me so? That actually looks good. So, I will turn this over to. Awesome Hill. Thank you, Simon. Security consulting company. 
I uh, got my first gig by breaking into the school board, showing them how I could change grades. I got hired for $32,000 to help them fix the problem. I was 16. Uh, so, you know, it's a fun way to get started. Um, I wouldn't advise that. When I first proposed the contract to them, they said, we're either calling the cops or we'll hire you. We're going to audit your grades first and we'll let you know. So, um, it, this is one type of startup. A lot of people go to this type of startup. It was self-financed. It was very little capital startup cost. It was consulting. But ultimately, even though I was charging $400 an hour at that age, um, I could make $16,000 in two weeks. Um, I went 46 weeks out of the year without work. <laughs> um, consulting businesses do not scale very well. You end up having to spend a huge amount of time marketing, selling. You have to manage your bench strength. It is a lifestyle business. It's not an entrepreneurship business in my mind. It's a great career, but it's not building companies. And I learned that pretty early on in my career, so I was able to kind of move on from that. And I went on to create an internet service provider. So this was uh, kind of early in 1994. I had grown up online. I was running BBSs since I was nine. So when the internet age came, I kind of saw that this was going to be something big, and I decided to put together an internet service provider. Uh, we raised $50,000 in angel investment. Uh, got another $50,000 in equipment loan. We went on to become one of the largest in Montreal, and within three months of me launching, because there were none in Montreal, 150 other ISPs launched. So Montreal became a very competitive market. And we ended up becoming one of the leaders. We raised $3 million in corporate uh, finance. Did two mergers, two acquisitions, three lawsuits, one police raid. Uh, <laughs> it was an interesting experience. This is all in two years. Grew to around 150 employees. And the capital markets just you know, fell out for ISPs. So this is kind of before many of the people here experienced. This is one of the first internet crashes. And uh, you just couldn't raise money for the internet business, especially in Canada. So even though we were doing around 12 million in revenue, and we were the only large national ISP operating across Canada who was making money, we couldn't really get do anything with the business. Rogers, Videotron, uh, Simpatico were moving into high speed, they were subsidizing it, the dial up business was a dying business. So we sold the company for $8 million, which was okay, it wasn't great, it wasn't the big, rich, incredible thing I thought. But we sold it to a company for stock, and that company became BC Emerges, kind of roundabout way. And uh, just to give you an idea of how much luck plays into things, we were locked up with escrow when we sold the company, so we had stock and we couldn't sell it. We weren't allowed to. Um, by the time that ended, the, my co-investor, who put in $35,000, in two and a half years, that was worth $15 million. So, you know, it wasn't because we were smart, it wasn't because we were the best, it was just luck, you know? It was an ISP and it got rolled up into a big company that got caught up in the internet hype and it became a huge, great, big success. So, luck has a part to do with this. I then went on to create a company called Zero Knowledge Systems with my brother and father. So, some of you might be aware of Zero Knowledge. Uh, at a time, we were very famous for recruiting one of Waterloo's most famous graduates, uh, who's now a teacher here, Dr. Ian Goldberg. Uh, we recruited him off the Berkeley campus after he broke Netscape SSL and the GSM encryption code. And we kind of were emerging at the time where internet privacy was starting to get a lot of attention. We said as more users move online, the issues of privacy, identity management, security were going to grow. And so we were kind of leaders in the field, and we were kind of targeting moms who were afraid of the internet. And we said, hey, we can bring advanced cryptography and all this scary stuff, and we can really help them take care of their privacy and security in ways never thought before. And it was more than just cookies. You know, we were thinking about advanced overlay encryption networks for the internet, Akamai with encryption and anonymization built in. Uh, we were doing digital credentials, anonymous IDs. Uh, blinding technologies. We had every single cool visionary idea for how the future would work with privacy. Um, ended up being on the cover of magazines, we raised a bunch of money, we were kind of famous for uh, evangelism and kind of the cypherpunks got behind us, investors got behind us, we were on 60 Minutes, um, and we had this advanced encryption, trying to make it easy, and I went out to raise venture capital for the first time, professional venture capital. Um, was heading to Silicon Valley and just kind of said, you know, we need to raise big money for a big dream. Um, we did not act like a Canadian company when we went to raise money. We acted like a global company. 
We really, really acted like we were going to be owners of a huge emerging space. And so we didn't think small. We were always thinking very, very big and very bold. So um, we ended up raising 75 million in venture capital, um, grew to 230 employees way too fast. We ended up with five business units, none of which were viable in and of themselves. Uh, we were doing work with Nokia, Oracle, RSA, you name it, everyone wanted to partner with us, but none of it was turning into viable long-term business units. So we went, you know, incredible experience, and the crash happened. 